Hello and welcome. This is the first uh, of, I think, four videos for our limits series. We're going to first talk about um, just limits of functions and how they work. Okay, first of all, here's our formal definition of a limit. And as I told you guys before, unless I specifically tell you you need a formal definition, then don't don't stress about memor memorizing any sort of formal definition. But in case you needed it, in case you needed to connect with it or math language makes sense to you, then here, here it is. Here we go. Um, I will tell you this on the AP or the B, AB and BC exam, the formal definition is not tested. You just have to understand what a limit is, how to apply it, et cetera, et cetera. So the first thing we're going to start with is our graphical and tabular approaches. On your page, you have these uh, these graphs, these three example, 1A, 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 1B, and 1C. And so here is our graph. So the first question is, what is f of x approaching as x approaches 1 from the left? And on your page, you have this kind of notation. And so in essence, that's all they're, they're saying. What they mean is, um, sorry, let me get this uh, over here. What they are saying is that if you can see my cursor over here, this is what that means. So my f of x, here it is. What is f of x approaching? That's my limit. As x, here is my va variable, whatever that is. In this instance, it's x approaches, here's that arrow, and then some domain value, one, from the left. And that's what that little uh, subs or superscript means right there, that little negative sign. So let's go ahead and go through our questions here. So it is approaching two from the left. And as you can, if you can follow along with my cursor, you can see do, 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 it approaches two from the left. But what about approaching from the right? So we follow along, do, 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 go on our graph. And it is also approaching two from the right. So the limit of f of x as x approaches one from the right is equal to two. There's that math literacy st sentence. Okay. But what about the function at x equals two? Well, we have to we have to understand and, and know this property, this concept of limits, and that is that the limit from the left, as as you can see on our page, as x is approaching uh, a from the left, the limit from the left has to equal the limit from the right. And so, since our limit from the left equal two, the limit from the right equal two. Therefore, my limit as x approaches one, it must also equal two. Okay, what about my function value at x equals one? Well, looking at my graph, I can see clearly there's a big old hole, there's a gap. So that means we write this as the function value at that point does not exist, D-N-E. That's a common acronym that you can use in this course and you can use on the AP exam. You could have also told me that it was undefined and it's abbreviation U-N-D, that's okay as well. Okay, we're moving on to example 1B and so just Real briefly going through it. As I approach one from the left, my answer is two. As I approach one from the right, my limit is approaching two. So since my limit from the left and my limit from the right equal the same value, then my limit at x approaching one must also equal two. But what is my function value? What is g of one? Well, I come over here and I look at, at one on the line itself on the linear line there's a hole but I do have a coordinate point down here which tells me my function at one is equal to one okay moving on to my next example my limit so I'm just going to go through these real quick the first thing is two two so if the left and the right equal then it must be two and my function value at that point is also two Okay. So here's a point where I want you guys to take a moment and pause and do these for yourself. Uh, we're going to do three, or I'm going to show you three examples, and I hope you do pause, attempt the answers before looking at the answers. So here's that first example, and here are your answers. Here's that second example, and here are your answers. And finally, our third example and your answers. Okay, so let's go back to our notes and let's let's look at this and just kind of do a little reset. At this point, you should be able to answer these questions right off the bat. Is this true or false? So the limit as X approaches negative one from the right is equal to one, true, fantastic. The limit as X approaches zero from the left, is this equal to zero? Is this true or false? This is true. 
Okay, recall I'm approaching from the left. What y value is that? That is zero. My limit as x approaches, oh, is that the same? Okay, here we go. My limit as x approaches zero from the left is equal to one. Well, if the previous was true, then this has to be false. But I can also look, it's approaching the, the, the y value zero. One is all the way up here. That's not what I'm approaching, okay? Does the limit from the left equal the limit from the right? Heck yeah, they do. They both equal zero, which if that's true, then my limit at zero, does it, it exist? Yes, it does. Does my limit at zero equal zero? Absolutely, because the limit from the left equals zero, the limit from the right equals zero. And if it, if it equaled zero, could it possibly equal one? No, so that is false. And I think this is our final question, the limit as x approaches 1. Well, if I'm looking at 1, then I have to look at the left and the right first. So at the as I approach from the left, it's equal to 1. As I approach from the right, it's equal to 0. So that means the limit can't even exist because the left and right do not exist. So this is a false statement. Oh, we have another. Okay, so the limit as x approaches 1. 1 is equal to 0. Uh, the, same, the same question there, um, the same or the same concept there, the limit from the left and the limit from the right are not going to equal each other. So that means that my limit can't even exist. There's no real value. And then my limit uh, as I approach 2 from the left is going to equal 2. No, that is false because as I look, it's, equal, it's, a, it's right on that uh, x-axis, which means that it's approaching the y value 0. And great, great. We're going to move on to our tabular section. So I have two tables for you guys considering the same exact function, um, x to the fourth minus one over quantity x minus one. Now, if we had been doing this in class, I would ask you guys to fill these tables in. I'm going to provide these tables for you. But what we're looking at first is the limit as x approaches 2 and my function value as x approaches 2. Then we're going to look at a second table looking at slightly different x values. And we're going to look at the limit as x approaches 1 and my function value as x at, at 1. So let's look at that first table. Okay, I've filled it in for you. So traveling from the left, my limit is approaching the value 15. Traveling from the right, my limit is approaching value 15. Therefore, since those are equal, my limit at, let me write this for you guys, my limit over here must also be, why isn't this working? Okay, so, ooh, sorry about that. My limit must also be 15, okay? And what is my function value at that point? It is also 15. Awesome. So let's go ahead and continue on to our next little table. And I've placed those values in for you again. So again, approaching from the left, my limit is approaching the value 4. From the right, my limit is going to equal 4. So if the limit from the left and the limit from the right equal each other, then my limit at 1 must also equal 4. But look at what's happening at that function value. It does not exist. Now, we've seen this multiple times in this video. I've gone over this over and over again because we're getting to the fact that my limit is not a function and my function is not a limit. They are not dependent on each other. Function val functions evaluate and function solving evaluates the line or the quadratic or whatever, the function itself, the graph itself, the parts of the function that you're looking at. Limits talk about an approach. So we're going to we're going to make sure we hone in on that. We harp in on limits don't affect functions. Functions don't affect limits. They are two completely separate concepts. So going into that, I've got a challenge question for you. Whether or not the limit as x approaches a of f of x exists depends on how f of a is defined. Is this statement sometimes true, always true, or never true? Take a moment, pause, think about this question, and answer it on your own. Okay, welcome back if you did pause your video. So this statement is it sometimes true, always true, or never true? Well, the answer is it is never true because I just got through trying to drill into you that my limit does not depend on my function and my function will not depend on my limit. They are two totally different concepts. All right. So, ooh, what did I do? 
let's go ahead and I don't know if you can see that bottom part because my my thing is kind of docked down here, but I'm sorry. This is the same question, but I wanted to show you the graph. 